senescent cells, the, the simple way I think of them is they're a type of stress cells that have had sufficient stress that they've basically been, um, have like their ability to replicate, to create clones of themselves, essentially offspring has been frozen. And a senescent cell, like any stress cell, should eventually be gotten rid of either through apoptosis, which is a, a Greek word that means falling off, but think of it as just the, the cell would break apart in a really um, planned way and the immune system would gobble up the debris. Um, but senescent cells, as we get older, um, have figured out a way to bypass or you know, not go through apoptosis, so they accumulate. And um, one of the reasons that's problematic is just there now stress cells are taking up more space in our tissues that would ideally be filled with healthy cells. The other reason is that the senescent cells that accumulate with age can secrete compounds into the microenvironment around them, many of which are inflammatory in nature. And a lot of the consequences of senescent cell accumulation is because of that, that changing to the microenvironment. And so what happened around, I think it was 2011, some scientists got together and said, okay, well, these senescent cells accumulating look like they're probably not a great thing. Um, let's do a study where we modify the genes in animals. And what those modified genes will do is they'll make it easier to get rid of senescent cells. So basically they put that gene in animals and what they saw was these animals aged in a much healthier manner. So that, I think at that point in time, that kind of was a tipping point for our interest in senescent cells increasing because now it was more evident the role they might play in poor aging. And so in 2015, the uh, group led by Mayo Clinic and the Scripps Institute of Aging, which is based in Florida, here in the United States, got together and decided to see if there was any compounds that might also cause senescent cells to um, be managed more effectively, essentially to go through apoptosis. So they screened compounds that were known to create apoptosis in other st types of stress cells and came up with two, a quercetin and a, a medication called the satinib that um, were senolytic in their original ex exploration and called those compounds senolytics. Um, and then their original published study on that was quite promising. Again, now doing these compounds orally in what's thought of as a hit and run dosing. So instead of doing it daily, every day, every day um, supplementation with these compounds, they did it just for bursts and then a time period, almost a vacation before they would do it again. So that idea of intermittent dosing. And again, so I just, uh, you know, big changes in health span. So that think um, study really, whatever the enthusiasm was at 2011 with that transgene study, it really took off with that 2015 Mayo study. Um, and since then, um, senescent cells and senolytics have, you know, there's now hundreds and hundreds of citations on PubMed, if you were to search the term senolytics, and they seem to touch on all different areas of the body, everything from you know, joints to skin to organ function to the way the brain performs as we get older. The information is obviously preliminary, right? Obviously, when you start at animals, there's a long way to go to, you know, see if the same thing happens in humans. And that said, it seemed to me one of the most promising areas to date of aging. Really the first one where an intervention appears to clean up damage that accumulates as we get older. Right. Have you been have you been following the Mayo Clinic uh, trials because they started a few years ago? They started human trials with Desatnib and Questin. Um, do you know what the latest is on those? Have, have there been any updates? So they started um, some on Desatnib and Quercetin, and then some on um, Fisetin, which is um, another compound they identified a couple of years later as potentially a more um, uh, overall, what they would have thought at the time, stronger senolytic than the quercetin on its own. So a different polyphenol. Mm -hmm. um, they've published a few of, so the disatinib and quercetin are usually just abbreviated D and Q. So they've done what I think of as um, preliminary human studies. Um, so usually for listeners, they may already know this, but um, there's often what we thought of as a phase one, phase two, phase three progression through clinical trials of things. Um, phase one is more often for safety and tolerability. So there's been a couple published, um, what I think of as phase one studies on the D and Q combination. 
The Fisetin, they've not published anything. Um, my impression is that two of those studies are done. Um, and that's from in the US, it's, there's a um, website, clinicaltrials.gov, where you would register studies in advance. And then you can um, put the results in before they're published, um, kind of almost like preliminary. And it, um, you know, just judging on that, results of two of the Fisetin trials have been completed, but they're yet to be published. Um, you know, and, um, you know, so that's kind of where things are. My guess would be, you know, within the next year to two years, we'll see a few of the DNQ and maybe one or two of the Fisetin studies um, hit publication. Right. That will be interesting. Yes. Although the, they are in, they are with specific indications, I believe. They're not in healthy people. That they're Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, the nature of the beast in the U.S. Mm -hmm. is... So th those groups are basically exploring the use of um, senolytics as medications. Mm -hmm. And the way the U.S. Um, FDA works is for something to be approved as a medication, it has to have uh, mm -hmm. like basically a disease that it's working on. So the um, like one of the studies is an example that was registered was um, looking at people that had um, a viral infection, you know, joint disease is another common area that's been looked at. So I think of the two DNQ studies that were originally published, one was on people with um, fibrosis in the lungs. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so they, it wouldn't translate to healthy people per se, but that's, the, you know, their, their focus is trying to get these pushed through, you know, these trials to eventually maybe have a medication use where, I, I know, you know, as a naturopathic doctor, you know, and a dietary supplement company, our focus is much more on what can we do to keep healthy people healthy 